all roads lead to Manchester this weekend as we have the Manchester Derby as well as the lineup of other games in the Premier League and across Europe. Welcome to the Nutmeg on Guardian TV. My name is Solomon Fowe and Swore returns to us in the studios. It's great to have you on the show today. <laughs> What a brilliant time it is to get back into the studio. Mm -hmm. Mourinho is back on the ground. Exactly. We have um, massive fixtures. We have the, uh, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the derbies. The Manchester United. Not even just the Man Manchester um, derby. We had the crazy one over the week, uh, over the week uh, okay. from uh, the Messi side. Okay, the Messi side derby. And then yeah. we have the one from Juventus to Lazio. Enough of excitement. And then we have Anthony Joshua this weekend as yeah, well. Yeah, we so, do. I so, mean, so many things to be excited about. So, yeah. Really, a, a whole lot to be excited about. But first, Let's keep our excitement to Manchester United against Manchester City. Incredible game, especially on the back of Manchester United uh, defeating Tottenham. That's in midweek. And, you know, them bringing that sort of energy, that sort of passion into that particular fixture, which is a debut itself. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you expect from that particular fixture? This is what I'll say, though. Um, the pendulum has switched from when we saw Manchester United facing Manchester City in April, where we got Bernardo Silva and Libra Sunny doing okay. their wonders. All right, now you don't have someone like an Aguero uh, starting, or you're not sure yeah, that he's going yeah, to start anyway. Injured. And then you also have uh, Gabriel Jesus, who suddenly has found his scoring boots once again, after okay. almost not scoring for the better part of the year. And then you have, on the other side, a Rashford that has decided that... Whoa, he's on fire. He's the I, man on fire now. It's not like he's on fire, but there was something off about Rashford for me for a while because when he started wearing that two chain thing, you know that gold mm. chain, mm. he started doing pepper them. <laughs> and when he started doing pepper them, he stopped playing proper football. Okay. But the minute he took off the chain, it's almost like Samson took off the air or grew exactly. the air and glory came back to him. Mm. So I'm trying to see how it's going to play out because Mr. Experimental, OGS, is already starting off again. He tried uh, two games ago, uh, ago when they were playing at Sheffield um, United. Okay. He tried to put Phil Jones and one of the old timers into the game. It back it back fired on him yeah. and then he then decided to bring an Ashley Young into the Tottenham game yes he was slow that um that particular hango or, or left flank from Ashley was always exploited but you know what the Manchester I saw was so different that now I'm looking at Manchester City I'm like yo we already know that you always concede goals now because you don't have proper defenders Otamendi is just not an Atarudu that has <laughs> sauce. I mean Fernandinho does better defending mm -hmm. than Otamendi so I already know that this game is going to be go go first for those that like to put something down okay. and then for those that really really like to put something down it's probably going to be like over 2.5 I'll probably put it 3.5 why because Man City can score when they decide to and when they decide to it's easy for them to take advantage of it the only problem is for now everyone seems to know their roots and especially if you're going to be using young boys like daniel james or the one that's covering up uh, mason greenwood that's covering mm -hmm. up for martial because martial is still out okay. in fact six major players from manchester united are still out so what we have are unknowns six unknowns that might be playing or starting for manchester united so those boys if they decide to wear their responsible cap it will be very difficult for these other ones in Manchester City that we know what they are about. We know the tricks in your bag. We already know how to stop a silver if you're very serious. Keep your defensive chip and you're very good to go. You eat them on the flank so or on the, pre or, or on the counter. So I think this is a game that everybody will bass and boost. And all I know is this is Christmas season. If you're about that life, just know that it's going to be probably <laughs> 3.5. Okay. Now, now, now I, I hear you when you see all of these things because it's, it's Manchester United with so much to prove, you know, mm -hmm. uh, from that Tottenham game since they were playing against um, Jose Mourinho mm -hmm. that just came to Tottenham. And now they're playing in the derby again against Manchester City. There's so much to prove. And I hope that they bring that fire and that positivity that we saw in that Tottenham game into this particular fixture. But looking at the Manchester City side, um, you, you, like, like you alluded to, the defence is not in tip-top shape. Up front, maybe Gabriel Jesus is deputising mm -hmm. really well for Sergio Aguero but he is no Sergio Aguero to be mm. honest and also in the midfield De Bruyne is playing in madness um Bernardo Silva maybe has not hit the heights of last season but you're looking at that midfield like will um the Manchester United side especially the midfield we saw Fred and McTominay there in the last fixture will they be able to stand against them um, the likes of Kevin De Bruyne David Silva and um who's the last person Rodrigo yeah. in that midfield okay now we're calling the serious men 
in this particular fixture because okay. I don't feel like the change is going to happen from the frontliners. Normally, when you're facing a derby, most people will call like the Messi side derby. You'd want to call like, hey, the Salah, oh, Salah is not there. Okay, that means it's going to be money. Same thing when it comes to the Manchester derby. I mean, when you talk about Manchester derby over the years, it's always about the frontman, whether it was a Ronaldo of that time or a Rooney of that time okay. or, you know, an Aguero because Aguero has outlasted a lot of them. A whole lot of them. But <laughs> now you're talking about the midfield. It's the quality of the midfield that will stand out for you because most most times, most strikers only depend on what is fed to them, especially for teams like this. Or like before that, the striker would drop deep, Kolebo, Angu. Most times now, levels have changed. Now you see the midfielder that will just be like, I'm feeling myself, McTominay will fire a ball. Mm. But the problem is, is it going to be given that space to fire the ball? Yeah. Normally, if a Fernandinho was playing up front as a DM, then we normally would. Brilliant. I would say, never. But the man is going to be doing two things. He's going to be thinking on behalf of himself as a midfielder All and right. thinking on behalf of himself as a center back okay. <laughs> it's pressure especially when you're chasing small small boys uh you're senior with like five six years and those boys are ready to come and make a name exactly for themselves. Yeah, especially so, the likes of daniel james who is really nimble he's just like 18 just like green they're really young and they're really hungry and they're academy boys that want to stamp their names and so far so good for every opportunity given to them they managed to show flashes in the pan that show you that these are boys that maybe could really really stand out especially when you consider what their mates are doing in other places other places like say the leicesters of the world or chelsea's of the world academy boys are stepping up to the plate so when you look at manchester a lot has been put on the um, academy boys they want to show themselves but one thing I know that might not work in their favor is half a De Bruyne is still mm. better than most seasoned footballers. Yeah, true. So if De Bruyne brings his left leg to and the he, field... He, if, if he comes in full in <laughs> that one, comes in hot... I mean, you, you, you would have expected that you would see something like that in the, what's, uh, what's the game they play? Bonnie that they gave them 4-1, Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Bonnie. You would expect that you would see a lot of that flash in. But for some reason, there's been something that has been lacking in confidence exactly, for in Manchester that city, city side. I think that on some level, there's something that the manager has to motivate is people every time for every season you have to find the right words find the right uh, uh, ingredients to to, to to push them sometimes you have to shout for them okay. sometimes you have to be like i'll give you cake sorry was giving chelsea people cake like oh, whoa no. every friday chop cake I, i'd love that sort of treat <laughs> <laughs> you know they were giving some people treats even when you came and started patting people in the back this is a guy that normally will blast you especially middle of his career on like mm -hmm. the first time or the first part of his career in chelsea the very first time he came and when he was in Porto, that he was taking them out he was like oh boy Follow my wife, hang out. She will tell you things about so your girlfriend. So stuff like that from Jose. He used Jose. to be that uncool. But now, Pep has tried different means. He has exhausted the trick in his ass now. And these boys, all they want is Champions League. And if they are not getting Champions League, I don't think they are that motivated It's, it's good you get to that because I'm, I'm thinking that this Manchester City side, the chink in their armor, you'd say, is the defense. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you had said that earlier. And now you're, you're looking at a Manchester United side with Daniel James, with um, Rashford, and a side that is pretty much built on the ethos of counter-attacking. And mm -hmm. that has been one of the downfalls of the Manchester City side. Now, we saw that game against Norwich City mm -hmm. where there was Temo Puki that saw, um, taught Cantwell. through the, uh, Cantwell and Temo mm -hmm. Puki that taught through the defense of Manchester City. And it, it, was, it was painful to watch for a Manchester, United, uh, Manchester City fan. Now, would you say that such things can replicate itself in this particular fixture? And would you say that um, there's more pressure on Manchester City for them to get this victory? Because looking at the table, they are currently third and Liverpool don't show any signs of abating. Oh, yeah, I like that you mentioned the fact that it's pressure you know in local parlance we say now pressure they make pipe the bust okay and so far so good <laughs> i feel like i like when you drop all these dimes <laughs> can, can you give me that again no now pressure they make pipe bust Bam. i'm certainly going to put that on my wall <laughs> oh wow you should be, you should build me okay I mean, I there, my, there, there, there's no invoice. problem we'll talk about that after the show <laughs> but what i can tell you about this is this sharp when it comes to handling the pressure, so far so good. Ten games, uh, at least in the Premier League alone, for people like Liverpool, almost similar amount for Manchester City. Mm -hmm. In this run of games for the holiday season, this December, and the truth is, every single game counts. Especially when you know that you are chasing eight points, and if you if you drop the ball, it extends again to eleven, and mm -hmm. everybody knows. On like this season, that now first quarter. Only just first quarter, the gap is so massive that you are now looking at yourself and wondering, did I come here to play or did I come here to really play? Normally, you would be like, okay, after January or when we get to January, that's when we should panic. But that's not the case anymore. If you snooze, you lose.